Welcome to this introduction to your window into organizations, databases. Hi, I'm Jeff Hoffer, a member of the Board of Directors for Teradata University Network and co-author of a leading database textbook, Modern Database Management, published by Prentice Hall. In this tutorial, you will be introduced to databases through a series of questions about databases and with examples of the use of a sample database. We will cover what is a database, what are the components of a database, what do we do with a database, and we'll show some simple database query examples, what is the most common way of thinking about a database, are there different kinds of databases, what technology do we use to access a database, and here we'll show some more advanced query examples, and finally, how can I learn more? So, what is a database? Consider data about your university library. The library staff would want to know data about books, magazines, and DVDs that the library has in its holdings, about students who use the library, and about the checkout of holdings by students. This data won't be very accessible if it is haphazardly managed. The data will be easier to retrieve, maintain, and protect if we organize the data into similar collections of all the books and the DVDs and the magazines, all the students, and all the checkout slips of these various logically related items, hence a database. In this example, checkout slips help us logically relate students to the books, magazines, and DVDs they use. Also, we even group different items, books, magazines, and DVDs into one super category of all of the library's holdings. This picture makes it easier to understand what data we have about the library and even suggests, as we will see, how we might find logically related items. More on this later. So from this library example, you probably have an intuitive feel for what the components of a database are. First, there are entities, such as persons, in this case customers, objects, such as products, events, customers placing orders, and concepts, such as line items on the orders, which might represent data we need to help run a product manufacturing company. Second, each of these entities has characteristics that describe them, which we call attributes, such as name and address for customers, description and finish for products, order date for orders, and ordered quantity for the line items. And there are special attributes called identifiers that uniquely distinguish, for example, each customer from every other customer. For simplicity, we'll call these customer ID, product ID, and order ID. Each line item, which represents how much of a given product was ordered on each order, will be identified by a combination of order ID and product ID. We'll come back to this question of components in a moment, but let's first think about what do we do with a database. Actually, there's much that we can do, but before we can talk about that, we have to have a more workable way to visualize data in the database. Today, this is done by thinking of each entity as a table of data. For example, consider product. The product table will have a different column for each product attribute and a different row for each product we sell. Now, we can find different data in this table. To do this, we need to query the table using a query language just as we might ask a reference librarian to find resources we need to write a research paper. For databases, there is an international standard language called SQL, or SQL, that we can use with almost 
all databases. So using the SQL language, we can ask questions about the data in the product table, such as, what are the product finishes? What are the distinct product finishes? What products are made of ash? And how many products are made of ash? Now, let's see how we would do this using software called SQL Assistant from Teradata, a leading supplier of a very high performance database software. We are using SQL Assistant Web Edition from Teradata as the environment for entering SQL commands. I'll tell you later how you too can use SQL Assistant. For now, I've simplified the SQL Assistant screen so we can concentrate just on the SQL commands we enter and the results. Using the SQL language, we're going to query a table of data about products in a fictitious company called Pine Valley Furniture. The first question we just asked is one of the simplest kinds of questions, which is to see the values of some attribute. Well, you'll remember this question was, what are the product finishes? The command in SQL to show data in a table is select. And all we need to include with the select command is the name of the table where the data is stored. In this case, product, T, and the name of the attribute we want to display. In this case, product finish. So the command is fairly simple. It is select product finish, which is the attribute we want to display, from the name of the table, in this case product underscore t. The standard is to end each SQL command with a semicolon. And then we click the execute button to see the result or answer table. SQL shows the results of queries in a table of values. So SQL is perfectly consistent. It stores raw data as tables and produces results as tables. This is convenient in case we ever want to store the result of a query back into the database or use the result of one query as a table in another query. That's when SQL really gets powerful. But we don't need to see the same product finish repeated. So our next question was, what are the distinct product finishes? To answer this, we can edit the previous query by inserting the SQL keyword distinct in front of the attribute we want to display. So we get select distinct product finish from product underscore T. Now when we click the execute button, we don't see finish values repeated. Another frequent question is to find rows in a table, in this case products, that have some common characteristic. You'll remember that we said we could ask the question just of this kind, which was, what products are made of ash? Looking at the result of the last query, we see that a value of finish is actually natural ash, not just ash. We'll need to be very precise then with our query. So we want to place a qualification on which rows we want to display. In this case, we want to see all the attributes of the national natural ash products. We could list all the attributes of product after select, like we just listed product finish, but we'll use a shortcut. In our select, we'll use a wildcard symbol of asterisk, meaning all the attributes. And then we'll tell SQL in what table we want to find the attributes. Again, it's from the product underscore T table. And then limit what rows to display with the SQL WHERE clause. So we'll add to our query WHERE PRODUCT FINISH equals NATURAL ASH. 
We have to put single quote marks around natural ash because SQL sees it as a string of characters and space is a legitimate character. So we need the quote marks to say where the phrase we want to search on begins and ends. Now when we click the execution button, we see data from all the attributes or columns of the product table, but notice that we see rows where the value of finish is only natural ash, which is what we asked for. The final example question we discussed earlier was a little different. That question was, how many products are made of natural ash? So sometimes we don't actually have to see the data but rather want to aggregate the data in some way, letting SQL compute that summary for us. In other words, we want to count the number of rows in the product table where finish is natural ash. This means that we can edit our previous SQL command to display a count rather than the attribute values. So we're going to replace the asterisk with count asterisk. Here the asterisk tells the count function to count the rows. And when we click the execute button, we still see a table, but this time the table has just a column heading and one row with the count. Well, we have our result, but it's not very pretty. Thankfully, SQL gives us some ability to reformat answer tables. In this case, let's rename the count to be how many ash? Which we can do by editing our query by inserting an alias with this name after the count. Then when we click the execute button, we get the same result as before, but with a more readable column heading. Now, let's return to the discussion of databases to see how to connect logically related data.